UDF 2601 students. I'm Dr. MP Maluka, you are primary lecturer for RD, RDF 2601 for this academic year 2601. You are welcome to this important session. Esther will be taking you through the most important tips relating to the module overview and as well as the assessment and some little bit of the portfolio. As I've already mentioned that I'm Dr. Malogam. In case you need to get a hold of me, please make use of my contact details in them. That is uh, malogp at unesa.ac.za. And then my contact number is 012-429-6677. I will repeat the contact number 012-429-6677. Double six, double seven, and also please take note that uh, I only got away now that in tutorial letter one zero one, uh, the contact details are still the ones of the previous lecturer referred to as a uh, Mrs. Engetu, and also the email address uh, still reflects her names. Please. Ignore that and make use of the one that is presented in here as my log p at unisa.ac.za with the contact number below. So what is important, the important information that um, firstly you need to know, make sure that you register with my UNISA. I have seen that most of you have already activated my live email account and that uh, make sure that you regular access to the MyUNISA module website as well as your group site. I have seen that um, there are still some of the students who are contacting me through the private emails. I have reiterated several times that private emails are not allowed. Hence, you have been provided with my live email address. Make sure that in all instances, when you communicate to any of the UNISA staff members, you make use of your my live email address. You, uh, the reason why you don't get most of the information why you lose so much, it is because any information that we send to you, we make use of them, my life email address. So that is why it is very important that you activate it. So like I said, the tutorial letter uh, is there, it is uploaded under the official study material. Make sure that you go uh, through it. And uh, I have mentioned before that uh, the email address that is still in that tutorial letter is that of Mrs. Ngetu. Please make use of the ones that I've just shared with you now of malogp at unisam.ac.za. I need to give you the tips for assessment and portfolio submission. I'm aware that uh, you have already submitted a assessment one which was uh, which was quiz the mcqs the due date is not yet uh, closed but make it a point that you don't miss the due date so admission to the exam uh, exam in this case we are referring to the portfolio because we don't have the we don't have the official take home examination but you are examination will be in the form of a portfolio which is already posted in your model model a uh, model site so this as i said the assessment one that you have already submitted serves the two purposes number one it allows you to get into the examination failure to have this assessment one it means that a um, you are access to the examination will not be considered. It is therefore mandatory for all the students to have this assessment one submitted because you will not gain access to the module. In other words, the system is not going to allow you to submit assessment two. Assessment two, the date is already at them for submission. It is already opened and I'm so happy for those who have already started working on it and time again reverting to me to ask some more clarification. The same with OPM is applying with the portfolio. 
like uh, if you missed assessment one, you missed assessment two, there's no way in which you are going to be granted an opportunity of writing the portfolio, since all those assessments contribute to your year mark. Furthermore, uh, I want to emphasize the most important issues when coming to the uploading of the assignments or when you submit the assignment. In most cases, your assignment might be the document or the files might be so big. Take note that there's no uploading of files larger, larger, uh, larger than 50 megabytes. So for more information, you go to the instruction on scanning your documents. If you go to your if you go to the information that I've already shared or any of the more, uh, of the UNISA website regarding the assignment submission, you will find the, uh, the barcode. You will be uh, requested to scan that barcode and you will see the steps that you need to do in case you submit anything which is larger than uh, what is expected. So what you do is that you must click on the submission button on the relevant assessment shell or my module, and then you will be able to submit your written assignment on that uh, module site. So the other important thing, we always have the problem of the student submitting the incorrect assessment. It is your responsibility to make sure that you submit the assessment that you expect us to receive. In most cases, we do receive um, other documents other than the assessment that we are expecting. So my advice to you is that you must create a folder and label it correctly. For instance, um, uh, the assessment that is due will be assessment two. So make sure that you open up a folder where you will have it labeled as RDF2601 Assessment 2 2024. In that way, there's no way in which you are going to miss it. I've been even now, I'm still receiving lots and lots of assessments that are incorrect. You claim them to be there the rightful assessment that is due to due to us. But in essence, when we open, we find that um, that is a totally different do document that has been um, submitted. So for instance, um, you can create a folder, you label it correctly with module code and as well as the assessment number. Assessment number are opened under the instructions, under the descriptions. As you open your assessment, you will find the unique number in them. So always make it a point that you label it with that a assessment number or unique number, which is unique, not the same with the, any other assessment that you will be working on. And then um, just another tip here, before you upload, just double check, make it a point that it is indeed the correct assessment and that is correctly uploaded. And um, in most cases, um, students upload only one page, not taking into cognizance that the other pages went through. So, uh, and as a result, we come to have the queries where students argue that um, I did submit my assessment, but hence I have received a zero mark uh, percentage. It will be because uh, you only managed to submit page one of your assessment, not submitting the rest. So make sure that all your pages go through. Like I said, that uh, go and scan that um, that barcode regarding the uh, assessment submission. It will give you the guides. It will give you step by step guide on how to submit without failing. Uh, to submit uh, all those pages that you have worked on. Another, uh, in case maybe your file is too big and of which is something that we are not recommending, the assessment that I am setting up for you, there's no way in which there will be more than 50 megabytes. Even the feedback that you are supposed to give, it, it should be within. In most cases, it takes less than 50 megabyte, but in case, uh, even if it can be in other modules, 
in case you may have a, any submission of the assessment, which will be more than 50 megabytes. I have included a, the information that I have embedded in here for the big, uh, big files. So please get the tips and information as you will find in this um, in this um, um, information that is embedded uh, below. Very, very important. Again, we have um, the issue of corrupt files. So in terms of the UNISA examination or assessment rules, the primary lecturer, which is regarded as the custodian as the, uh, of, the mod, uh, of the modules, take responsibility of the modules and adheres to the rules and regulations which are in line in, uh, with the assessment department instructions. So um, there's no way in which uh, someone else can regard your work that you have submitted as corrupt without uh, the primary lecturer. In this case, it will be my case without, uh, without me having declared that as a corrupt file. So examination or assessment instruction and procedures are also sent to all the students. So make sure that you read all those instructions. Another important uh, information, submission of date and time. In most cases, we have the students missing the date and as well as the time. You know, your, your assessments are opened as early as January. So you have enough time to work on your assessment before the due date. We don't want cases whereby on the last day you will be telling us that uh, you are faced with load shedding or you are having any, any other kind of a uh, disconnection. You should not wait until the last minute to submit your work. So like I said that the due dates were on the system with effect from the 1st of January for you to view and are accepted unconditionally. So submission should have been uh, three weeks after completion based on the date. And it's okay, you may uh, disregard that one as it was applying to another module. But just make it a point that uh, you submit your work on time. The reason why we are releasing this uh, assessment early in the beginning of the year, it will be because we want you to have enough time to go through this. If I can tell you, assessment one is still open, assessment two is also still open, so please work on that. I have also posted um, the portfolio, which is available and I guess closing in September. So I don't want cases where in uh, in September when you will be submitting your portfolio or your uh, what is regarded as an examination, coming up with excuses that I couldn't submit due to whatever reasons that you will be giving us. Assessment two will be closing sometimes around the first week of June. I'm also expecting you to have started on that. And by now, you should be done with, uh, with assessment one. Please adhere to the submission dates and as well as the times because no extra, no extension is going to be granted for this. No extension will be granted. Coming to the handwritten portfolio. Okay, before um, I get into, into more details regarding uh, the portfolio, or as well as um, any other assessment uh, submission. I've been receiving several inquiries regarding whether the assessment you are currently working on should be typed or handwritten. Uh, in this case, I'm referring to assessment two because most of you have already started to work on that. So as, a, a, as an institution, and the unit that I'm working in. We have considered handwritten assessments to be the most recommended method since they demonstrate your personal effort in writing as compared with the typed assessments where students often resort to internet sources 
and engage in cut and paste submissions, which is strictly prohibited under UNISA's assessment portfolio, uh, policy. And, uh, for instance, with your, uh, with your module, which is the resource development in foundation phase, this module has to do with, um, with the development of um, teaching and learning aids. We expect you to create those resources, but in most cases, we find that the student go to the internet, Google any form of a teaching aid that we, that we recommend them to create. Instead of, the, of creating, they cut and paste that. Hence, we are emphasizing that the submissions of assessment must be handwritten. The main thing is that we are avoiding such, a, such cases where the students are committing into, uh, into cut and paste. Nevertheless, you still have the option to type your own assessments. However, please be aware that all typed work will undergo veri verification through the tenant in system. You should be knowing what the tenant in system is and how it operates. Simply that um, it detects the plagiarism. Any work flagged with a similarity index from tenant in will not be considered for marking and therefore rendering your submission null and void. We see that um, for some other reason pertaining to different, uh, different students, typed assignments will still be considered. However, very strict uh, rules will be adhered to when we mark that. Even though uh, we accept those handwritten, and I mean not handwritten, they typed a assessment. But when coming to the creation, if I have given you the instruction of coming up with your own creativity of making any teaching aid, please make it a point that you draw or you create in any other form that you will be working on, except a cutting and pasting. So, um, sorry for that. Um, handwritten portfolio, it detests a plagiarism as I have elaborated knowing that their work will be handwritten um, their work will be handwritten encourages the students to invent more time and effort into creating that original content that will be meaning that uh, this work has been done by this um, particular student deterring to plagiarism since copying and pasting is less likely when um, the when the task requires um, your manual effort. So hence I'm saying that um, please uh, consider handwritten, but also not um, opposing the typed one, but you must know, but you must take note that um, we take that, um, we take any typed work under the verification systems like the turn it in. And should you be flagged, you must know that your work is not going to be considered. So we have um, different types of verifications here. Authenticity uh, verification, which says that handwritten portfolios are inherently unique, reflecting the student's personal writing styles and creativity. I think I've already elaborated much on this. And then um, again, in terms of real-time assessment, Handwriting allows the lecturers to assess an individual skills and abilities in real time. So this, in a way, can help to confirm the authorship of the portfolio and also verifying that this work has been performed or written by the student. Hence, we, um, we encourage you to have this handwritten uh, assessment. Handwritten portfolios or assessment often include the personal touches such as the sketches, which will be handwritten or handmade, the diagrams or as well as the instructions. So uh, I personally feel that uh, you must go with the flow of handwriting. So uh, in terms of uh, ethical considerations, so encouraging handwritten portfolio promotes ethical behavior, 
and you are work studies, it also reinforces the importance of honesty and integrity in all academic and, and as well as your professional endeavors. So uh, we have the skills demonstration in them showing that handwritten showcase an individual's communication and presentation skills, which are quite important in various educational and professional uh, contexts. So again, um, handwritten uh, assessment of work reduce accessibility to pre-made solutions. We are so sick and tired of the students of copying the text as they are from the internet or any, any other form of uh, artificial intelligence. So when portfolios are handwritten, it becomes more challenging for students to obtain pre-made or purchased uh, solutions. We have several cases wherein we find that uh, the assessments are sold. Yes, your assessments are online, so anyone can access this. But you are, you are the custodian of the submission of your work. So if you find someone there saying that um, I am selling this, imagine how many students will be purchasing those, uh, those solutions or the feedback. So once we start to recognize that, okay, about 50 or 70 of um, the students are having the same feedback, then it starts to raise our eyebrows and start to investigate. It's then that we will be taking this to a tenant in system, which will flag you as plagiarized. Handwritten portfolios can be used in a variety of settings, including classrooms, assessments, and creative projects. Their adapt uh, adaptability, making them a versatile tool for assessing and evaluating a student's work. So that is very important to just go through all the notes that I am going through with you now. So, um, so all, all that, any work that you copy without acknowledging, without paraphrasing or working it in such a way that um, it will not appear as having stolen from someone else's work, then that is regarded as academic dishonesty. So what are the consequences of this academic dis uh, dishonesty? Great reduction. You may receive a failing grade of the course if you regard, if we can regard um, you having gone or um, having acted or taking part in the um, academic dishonesty. So the consequences include those such as expulsion, you will be um, you will face long lasting consequences of academic and pro uh, career uh, prospects because the university is having the right to expel you transcript notation so in this case inclusion of a notation on a student's transcript indicating academic misconduct will reflect imagine having your transcript from first year indicating that um, this particular student, Dr. Maluka, has been uh, involved in this kind of an academic dishonesty. We will also um, indicate the type of academic dishonesty that you were faced with. Again, um, loss of scholarship or financial aid. In case maybe you have been depending on a particular scholarship or financial aid, there is a high possibility that you may lose it. The scholarship or any financial aid will withdraw from that. So please take note that whatever that you are doing is out of your own effort. You can also face the cost failure. For so in uh, in severe cases of cheating, you may fail the entire course, which can have a significant impact on your academic progress and graduation uh, timeline. It will be because that uh, we will be referring back. And as a result, we will hold you back based on what you did. Erosion, uh, uh, erosion of trust. You know, by so doing, by engaging in any of the academic dishonesty, you will be breaking your trust on us. 
as their university, as their primary lecturer, I will be saying that no, this particular student is not trustworthy. So as a result, um, it erodes, it takes away the trust between you and as well as uh, the faculty, and as well as among the students themselves. Your peers will be seeing you as someone else. It can also harm the overall learning environment and create a culture of suspicion. Imagine um, being in your last year and you have already started to send your CV seeking for employment. So it will be an embarrassment for me if maybe a potential employer is phoning me trying to find how far I know you. How do you expect me to express myself regarding your academic dishonesty? So, you know, it really put us in a very danger zone that we don't know how to uh, tell them. And we need to be honest as the, um, as the university. There's no way in which I can protect you knowing that the academic record has mentioned the notation that I've just um, mentioned with you um, just now. Again, the professional uh, consequences. Cheating can have professional repercussion as well. Some employers and graduate programs may ask about academic misconduct during the application process, potentially harming future career. As I've said, it also harms the future career prospects. So uh, this is also very, very dangerous because no one will be reflecting on you on a positive note. They will be mentioning all those that you have engaged with. And then it also have the educational impact. Cheating can undermine the educational process by devaluing the effort and hard work of honest students. Legal consequences. As a university, academic um, dishonesty may have legal consequences, meaning that the institution may have legal consequences against you. Plagiarism can lead to legal action if copyright infringement is also involved. So um, again, uh, personal consequences. Uh, this can have personal consequences such as guilt, stress, damage uh, to self-esteem. It may also strain relationship with peers, uh, instructors, and mentors. In, in severe cases, some of the students who committed the very same academic dishonesty cannot bear the pressures that they themselves caused, even go to an extent of committing suicide. Those are some of the things that we don't want to witness. So, um, in all what I have just uh, related to you is just to give you an overall of what will be expected from you. Should you have some confusion as you will be working on your portfolio, working on your assessment, I am ever available. Should, I, should it happen that I missed your call, I, um, I fail to respond immediately on the email that you sent. At any given point that I come to my PC, I will make it a point that I respond. You know, I missed, uh, should, it, should it happen that I miss a call, I will make a point that I return your call at any latest time that I get. And I'm just advising you that uh, should you need support, please make it so while time is still uh, allowing. I don't want the last minute things where in you will be a uh, imposing or a uh, overwhelming me with a lot of emails with a lot of questions that you should have started with them very early before you start with your assessment or before the year ends as you will be going to write the exam or the portfolio with all that said I'm seeing that a uh, work hard in silence and let success make the noise. I have established the discussion groups through the forums. You are also able to communicate with your PM, with your peer, um, your peer uh, module mates. I'm also available. I've also added uh, some extra study material other than the study guide that we are making use of. 
please make it a point that you make use of all those resources. We are ever available for you. And with all that said, I'm wishing you all the best. And I'm still reiterating this that um, please reach out should you need any kind of uh, any kind of the support. We are there for you. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you.